Hey guys, Irene here. Today I'm doing a Photoshop tutorial. I'm gonna be editing a picture from my lantern photo shoot. I'm gonna be doing a lot of color grading here, kind of a cinematic edit, and also uh, showing you guys how you can use the color theory to kind of further make your image even more interesting. I'm gonna show you how to take this image from before to after. And before we start, I wanted to quickly mention that now I got a sponsor button on my YouTube channel. This is a great way to support your favorite creators. So if you would like to go the extra mile in supporting my channel, you can become a sponsor now uh, for $5 a month, which you can cancel anytime the subscription. You will get some custom emojis that I made. Uh, you will get a badge that will show up in the comments and in the live chat. And I'm gonna be offering some perks for you guys so every sponsor's name will be featured at the end of every single video that i make you get to suggest video topics and ask me any question in the community area you will be also getting some free snow overlays and photoshop actions i already created the first sponsors only post in the community tab where you can find a link to download my snow overlay and dodge and burn photoshop action in the newest post you can also find the raw image that i'm going to be editing in this tutorial so when you download it you can follow me unfortunately this is only going to be available for my sponsors and i also included the sharpen photoshop action in this post all right let's get to the editing finally i'm starting in camera raw as usual i'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit brighter but not too much i'm gonna also add just a little bit of warmth into this image just a tiny bit. I always like to add a little bit of clarity, but with that, I also add some vibrance. Uh, for some reason, whenever you bump up the clarity, the picture becomes a little bit desaturated. And a lot of people actually ask me, why do I choose vibrance instead of saturation? I just find that vibrance is a lot more subtle and looks a lot more natural than saturation, especially for something like this and for just doing little adjustments in camera raw. I'm also gonna go ahead and bring back some of the shadows. Again, it's gonna show a little bit more detail in the shot. Uh, let's see if I wanna put some contrast up just a little bit. Um, let's bring the highlights down. It's gonna give us a more cinematic and a muted look. We can do the same with whites over here. Okay, so this is before and after the camera raw. That looks great, so I'm going to go ahead and just say open the image. Now, I do like the crop of this, so I'm not going to do anything here. But if you wanted to go for a true cinematic look, you could go into the crop and choose the 16 by 9 crop. This is uh, a really nice wide cinematic crop that you could do, but I'm going to stick with... Um, just the manual crop that I get straight from the camera. Uh, now I usually go ahead and do a little bit of skin retouch. So I don't want to go too crazy here because again I want it to look a little bit more real, almost like a screenshot from a movie. So I'm gonna only do a tiny bit of dodge and burn uh, underneath her eyes over here where she has a little bit of a dark circle. So I'm going to go ahead and play my highlight action. And just like I mentioned, if you are a sponsor, you will get this action for free. Uh, I'm just going to pick up a brush and I'm using a tablet so I don't have to worry about the opacity but if you guys are using a mouse I would highly highly recommend that you uh, lower your opacity to about 20% and I'm always using a soft rounded pressure brush so I'm gonna go ahead and lightly tap my highlight underneath her eye just concentrating it where I see that uh, dark circle right here Okay, this is it, so before and after on the dark circle. Let's actually add just a little bit right here. Uh, another thing that I always do is I back it up just a little bit, just to see if it looks good overall. Yeah, you see, I think it's a little bit too much. I'm gonna lower the opacity just a little bit 
to again just make it look very natural all right this is it so this is all i'm gonna do for the skin retouch here now i'm gonna go ahead and make her hair just a little bit bigger you guys know i love doing that and i always go ahead right click and duplicate the layer before i do anything just to make sure that uh, if I did something wrong, I can always go to the original. Uh, you can also just drag this right here and it's gonna create the background copy. Or you can use a hotkey. Uh, so now I'm gonna go into filter and liquify. And I'm gonna go ahead and mess up her hair even more and make it a little bit more winded. So I'm gonna just lightly, lightly make it bigger right here. Same on these strands right there. It's going to create the illusion that the wind is blowing them even more. Just make sure you don't overdo the liquify. Uh, it's very, very easy to make it look extremely unnatural. So I just recommend slight little movements. I'm going to also make this part of her dress a little bit bigger gonna just add a little bit more drama and here I'm just gonna define her body within this big um, blanket just a little bit more all right I'm gonna press ok that looks great and again let's back it up and see what that looks like Okay, so this is before and after uh, the liquify. I think I went a little bit too crazy over here. So I'm going to grab my eraser tool and erase it right there. Yeah, that was a little bit too much. But otherwise, it looks great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just merge my layers. Again, you guys don't have to merge the layers like I do. You can definitely keep them open. All right, so now I'm going to go into uh, dodge and burn on the whole image, not just for skin retouch. So I'm going to play the highlight action. And again, the easiest way I can describe um, the dodge and burn technique is to find the places where you naturally are getting highlights and intensify it. So over here on her hair, I can see that it's getting highlighted and I want to just brush it over that area and make it even more highlighted just intensify that and i keep going and changing the brush size uh, i make it bigger i make it smaller it's gonna pretty much ensure that um, your highlights will look a little bit more natural and real and i'm just doing that with the brackets tool and then in between, I can always check and see if I like what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and highlight her eyes just to make them pop. Very important for any portrait. I'm going to highlight the bridge of her nose just a little bit. And again, I'm following the same exact technique. I'm looking where I naturally get the highlights and I'm just intensifying them. Let's get a little bit closer here so I can see where I'm applying the highlights. I'm a big perfectionist and I believe in making every little detail uh, great. So I really like to zoom in and just kind of go over every single little detail and highlight all the little spots that needed. I like to go on the top of the chin, lower lip, cupid's bow. And then we see that we're getting some light uh, from the lantern right here. I want to highlight that area even more. Just to showcase that she's getting lit by that lantern. Her arm over here is getting a lot of highlights. So again, I want to intensify that. And let's intensify the fire itself right here. Just gonna make it a little bit brighter. All right, that looks good. So let's back it up and see what we have here. So this is before and after highlighting. Okay, I can see where I missed a few spots. 
I'm gonna go actually and delete the highlight from her forehead. Yeah, let's keep it a little bit darker. Just so that it looks like the only spot that's getting highlighted is here at the, uh, at the bottom of her face. Alright. That looks great. And now I'm gonna work on the shadows. So I'm gonna play my shadow action. I'm gonna zoom in. And I'm gonna first kind of outline her eye. And I can even go ahead and paint little eyelashes. Again, it might seem like this is not gonna really do much, but trust me, little details like that really matter and they will make your image stand out. I'm also gonna do this on her eyebrow. Now, over here, bridge of her nose, I wanna really, really intensify that shadow there. Underneath her lip. Okay, that looks great on her face. Let's zoom out and see. And you see, that just made the features of her face stand out just a little bit more. Okay, I think I'm done with the shadows. Yeah. Actually, let me do just a little bit of vignetting over here on the side of this image. I want to match it, the vignetting that is happening here. So I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to make it really big and with the same shadow action, I'm just going to go like that. Perfect. All right, so let's see what the dodge and burn alone looks like. So this is before and after the dodge and burn. As you can see, it just makes the image look a lot more 3D and real and the details just pop like crazy. So I, I absolutely love doing the dodge and burn. So now I'm going to go into color grading. I know a lot of you guys always ask me about how do I choose the color scheme for my images. So here what I decided to do is um, play off the cool and warm uh, tonality in the image. I have this lantern that is providing really warm and glowy light. And then it's kind of contrasted by the blue hour. You don't really see a lot of blues in this image right now, but I'm going to add it in. And um, and that way we're also kind of playing into the uh, color wheel. So if you look at the yellow on the color wheel, it is directly on the opposite side of the blue. Uh, and these two colors are complementary to each other. So that means that they're going to be really pleasing to the eye. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this image. I'm going to be using selective color for this, so I'm going to go into my adjustment layers and choose selective color. I'm going to go into reds and make them a little bit darker, a little bit more red and a little bit more yellow. Now I'm going to go into yellows and make them brighter like that and a little bit more yellow right here. Now I'm going to go into the greens, intensify the green color. And then in blues, intensify the blue color. Cyans, intensify the blue with a little bit of green. Okay, so what this did is just intensified the colors that were already in the image. Uh, I'm gonna go back to the background layer and choose another selective color adjustment layer right here. Now we're gonna be kind of painting on the color into the image. So I'm gonna go ahead with neutrals, which pretty much chooses every single color in the palette and um, almost gives you like a color filter on top. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of blue and a little bit of green right here. Okay, not too much. And then I'm gonna go into greens, again, make them greener. I'm going to go into yellows and make them a little bit more yellow just so we don't have too much of that green coming in. And maybe even add a little bit of the red there. Okay, that looks great. Now, I do not want this on the whole image. I only want to add this effect to the background. So because we added an adjustment layer, it already comes with the mask. And all we have to do is press Control I to invert it. And then you can pick up your brush and paint that effect to whatever spots you want it to be. So I'm going to paint it just only in the background, um, kind of around my model.
all right just like that so this was before and this is after so i'm gonna actually lower the opacity just a little bit yeah that looks great and now i'm gonna go ahead and add another adjustment layer with curves i'm gonna make it a little bit darker i'm just gonna play around with the curves here All right, just like that. And again, the same thing. I only want to apply this to the background. Um, and if you do not want to invert the mask, you can actually just take an eraser tool and I'm going to erase it off of the model. Okay, that looks great. And again, I'm just going to lower the opacity on that just a little bit. I like to really slowly work on my layers and uh, work on them with pretty low opacity. Uh, I'm going to add another selective color right now. And I'm going to also choose neutrals. But instead, I'm going to go into more of a greenish color like that. And then again, I'm going to go into yellows and bring them back. Let's go back to neutrals and bring just a little bit of a yellow. All right, that looks great. And then the same thing, I'm going to just go ahead and delete that off of the model. Again, I'm just using a soft rounded brush to do that. All right, and again, I'm just going to lower the opacity just a little bit. Okay, I think the background looks great. So now I'm going to work on the model. I'm going to show you a different method of doing pretty much the same thing that I just showed you. We're going to do it with color filters. So again, I'm going to go into adjustment layers and I'm going to choose the photo filter. Now you can go ahead and choose any color right here. So I'm going to choose pretty bright yellow that is more of a warm yellow just like that and I'm gonna make it just a little bit more intense about 30% right here so this is before and after on the color uh, on the photo filter and um, I'm gonna go ahead inverted with control I and now I can pick up my brush and just paint that on top of whatever spot I want so I'm going to mostly focus it on her face and where the light spills from the lantern. Just like that. That looks perfect. So this is before and after the photo filter. I'm going to take it off over here with a little bit of an eraser. I like how um, if we zoom in over here, half of her face is still more of a blue tone rather than lower right here. It's more warm. I think it looks really, really nice. All right. So this is before and after the filter. As you can see, it adds that warmth into an image. All right. So I'm really happy with the colors. Let me show you the before and after. This is before and after the colors. I just find that this looks a lot more pleasing to the eye and a lot more interesting and also makes the model really pop from the background while still making the background look quite interesting. Uh, so I'm going to merge these and get them out of my way and I'm going to do the last little adjustment and make the model pop from the background even more. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the layer. I'm going to go into filter and camera raw. I'm going to make her a little bit brighter. Again, go a little bit more on the clarity, just a little bit. Bring the shadows up. And bring the temperature up just a touch. Actually, no, I'm going to leave the temperature how it was and just bring the vibrance up. Yes, that looks awesome. All right, and then just press OK. Now I'm going to add a layer mask. I'm just going to press right here. And now I can press again control I to invert it and I can take my brush and then brush it on onto the places that I want, which is going to be only the model.
All right, that looks great. So before and after. Now she really, really pops from the image. Maybe I'm gonna put the opacity a little bit lower. Yeah, that looks perfect. And I'm gonna go into adjustment layer vibrance. Just one more time, make it a little bit more vibrant. Okay, that looks perfect. Now I'm gonna go ahead and play my sharpening action. I'm also gonna add this one to the perks of being a YouTube sponsor. So here's before and after of the sharpening. I'm just gonna lower it just a little bit. Yeah, that looks great. All right, so this is it. So let's see the before and after, before and after. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Hit that bell notification and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!